We've made it to part five of our paid search audit series. If you want to watch any of the previous videos, those are going to be linked right here. But today we want to talk about ad assets. They can be a hugely important part of paid search success. So we wanted to dedicate an entire video to them. Not to mention, there are so many of them that we'll need to walk through a little bit more time just to make sure that we cover everything. So in this video, we want to walk through how we review ad assets to understand how they're being used, if they're being fully leveraged, and then talk about some suggestions that we might make based on the types of common mistakes we find. Now, if you watched the last couple of videos around keyword strategy and ad copy strategy, you know that I spent most of my time in Google Ads Editor. Find that platform to be much easier to review those two strategies in an account. And that also meant that I got to anonymize a decent amount of the information in the accounts. So we didn't have to blur a lot of stuff out. This video is different. I personally prefer auditing ad assets in the Google Ads account directly because the interface is just easier to use. And even though you have to wait for different pages to load, all that good stuff, it's just my personal preference to review them here rather than in editor, which of course means that for this video, we're gonna have a decent amount of things blurred out because I can't anonymize an account that's live. Otherwise, the advertising would be terrible. Bear with us when it comes to the blurring, but you'll still understand what we're going for when we audit ad assets in this video. So first, we need to just navigate to the assets portion of the interface. And that's always going to be over here just under the campaign subheading. It's going to be under assets. And then there's an assets tab right below it. And that's going to park you on a screen that looks like this. And this is why I really like using the Google Ads interface for this because they have easy toggle buttons that we'll use to go between each of the different asset types up here. And then down below, not only do we have the asset itself, but if we keep going over in the columns, you'll be able to see the different level that it's applied to, as well as the status and the source that it came from, in addition to all the different performance metrics for each of the different ad assets we're looking at. Now, first thing I want to do is make sure all of the information on this screen is usable and what I'm going to want. So since this is a paid search audit series, I have the search campaigns option selected up here. We're not looking at any of the other type of campaigns. I have all of the campaigns selected and then we have everything that is enabled at the campaign and ad group level. Nothing that's paused because for this portion doesn't really help me out. I have a decent date range over here. I've got three months worth of data, effectively all of Q3. So that's good enough for me. And the last thing I want to do is make sure I have my columns in place. I always want the source column in here because that tells you whether or not the ad asset or if Google did it for you. But I still want clicks, impression, CTR, average CPC, and cost. But I also want some conversion metrics in here. And this is the same account that we've reviewed for the last couple of times. So there are a handful of different conversion actions. So I'm going to go into custom columns where they live and I'm going to apply the custom columns that we want to use. We're going to skip past you seeing all of the names of the custom columns because that could be a problem. So with the power of editing, now I have all of the custom columns that I need for all of the different calls to action that we're going to be using. So whenever you land on this assets tab in the first place, you're going to be defaulted to this all view. And I'm not going to scroll down because we're just going to have to blur a bunch of stuff out. But effectively what happens is you see every one of these ad extension types at all of the different levels and it's a really confusing mess. It's not easy to look at. So what I like to do is just go right down the line in order of the assets that are in here. So I'm going to start with image. Now image assets are a unique case in the asset world in that you can only apply them at the campaign or ad group level. They're not eligible for the account level. So here, my biggest challenge is going through and making sure that each campaign has image assets applied to them, because quite frankly, no matter what your business is, there's probably an image that you can use to apply to your campaigns. And all it's going to do is help you stand out against competitors in the right search results page. So here again, I know we have to blur out effectively this entire asset column. But the goal here is to make sure that each of the different campaigns has a handful of images. That one had a bunch. This one has a bunch more. That third campaign has even more assets. All of this looks pretty good. The last thing I would do is go through each of these different campaigns at a high level and determine which assets are performing well and which ones aren't depending on the conversion actions that we're optimizing for. Whether it's the landlord lead and cost per landlord lead, the landlord purchase and cost per landlord purchase, or a traveler conversion and a traveler CPA based on the tenant actions that we have. 
So without going through and looking at a bunch of these, I might say that the cost per lead for this image looks pretty good for both landlord and traveler. Whereas this one down here, the landlord looks really good, traveler, not so much. So depending on what the campaign goal is here, might call out that this ad extension might need to be adjusted or replaced depending on what the conversion goal is. Overall, this account has image assets pretty much everywhere, so that looks good. Now let's keep going down the line. The next two, business name and business logo, are gonna be a little bit different. These are extremely easy options that should not take long to set up. So if we click on business name here, we'll see that we have the name at the account level in this first line. But then down below, there are different lines for each of the different campaigns that are in here. While this might not be my preference, I'd rather just have them once at the account level. It's not really hurting anything to have it at the campaign level as well, because it's all the same. The brand name is the same. You're not ever going to change it. You're not going to test it because it's your name. You will see that these are automatically created at the campaign level, which again, for the business name, isn't really an issue. But if we come to business logo, you can see that the advertiser has created a logo at the account level, but Google has decided that at the campaign level, we need a different logo that it found someplace else on the website. So a couple things here. First, if this second logo that Google came up with isn't a problem, I personally wouldn't mind testing it here. Even through the blur, you can probably tell that one is very heavy on the color. It uses blue. The other one has a white background with only a little bit of blue. They're the same icon but the color scheme is different. I wouldn't mind testing that. Even though the logo is the same, the design is a little bit different. You might find that one works better than the other. So here I'd probably suggest clicking on this icon here and then adding to the account level. And the other thing that this brings up is the source of the ad extension, whether it was advertiser created or created for you by Google. Now, I happen to know that the rest of this account has all advertiser created assets, but the controls for the automatically created assets by Google are a bit hidden. So let's go ahead and go through those because this is something we always audit is what is going to be automatically updated by Google and what is not. So if we come over here to more, click this, account level automated assets is the only option. You can see here, there's a bunch of stats. All of this is in here, but what we wanna do is go to more and then advanced settings. This is where you'll see what Google is allowed to optimize for you and what they're not. By default, every one of these settings is going to say on whenever you first have your account set up. You can see here that they already have dynamic site links, callouts, structured snippets, automated locations, and dynamic images off. Those are all turned off. And if you wanna do adjust them, all you gotta do is open up the dropdown, either click on or off, depending on what you want, and then you just hit save. But in my mind, this setup looks fine. Seller ratings can be really valuable. Same with longer headlines and automated apps if you have an app. Personally, I might actually turn this off just because this account technically has an app, but from what I understand, they don't really wanna promote it. So this would probably be one I will suggest to them to turn off. Automated locations, same thing. If you don't have foot traffic to your location, maybe turn this off. Images can be turned off if you want to control them, same as structured snippets, callouts, and site links. But then the business name and business logo, that's what's currently on, and Google is filling in any gaps it finds and just putting a logo and a business name in there. Again, business name, not a huge deal. Logo might get you something new to test, but if you wanna have full control, you can easily turn these off. So now back on the asset tab, let's keep moving down the list. Let's start with site links. Now site links along with callouts and structured snippets are three of the ad extensions that I refuse to let go of. Every account should be using site links, callouts, and structured snippets because they are an easy, free form of copy. The only option that might not work for that is site links if you don't have more than one or just a couple pages on your site, but odds are you probably have anchors that you can use to send people to. And if you don't, it might make sense for you to develop them because all site links do is help you expand your ad variant in the search engine results page to take up more space and ideally direct your potential customers to better pages on your site. Callouts and structured snippets are effectively the same. They're free copy space. You don't have to do anything for it. You don't even need to have anything that drives people to a new website. It's just additional copy. There's no reason not to use these in my mind. So here we already have account level site links in place, which all look good. There's a good number of them. But then there's also campaign level site links and 
unfortunately, there's not a ton of these, and some of them are even at the ad group level. So this account presents a unique challenge. If you're using an account with multiple different campaigns and ad groups to effectively advertise the same service or product without much variation, I would almost always suggest using just account level site links because then you have all of the site links applied to all of the campaigns, all of the ad groups, and you can review performance on a campaign level basis by clicking up into the campaign dropdown selecting your campaign, and then even though the asset is applied at the account level, all of the performance metrics will be just for that one campaign. So you can analyze what's performing best at the campaign level, decide if you need to pause, change things, or develop a new strategy. This account, on the other hand, has campaigns that optimize toward different groups of people. We already have different conversion actions set up for landlords versus tenants. And that means that each campaign probably needs to send people to different landing pages, depending on who we're speaking to. If you'll remember in the previous videos, we have some campaigns that are designed specifically for tenants, some that are designed specifically for landlords, and some like brand, if nothing else, that's gonna capture a bit of both. In my mind, the account level site link strategy does not work here. I would not have site links applied at the account level. Instead, I would always have them applied at the campaign level and just effectively duplicate all the ones from the account level that apply to this brand campaign here. That way you're able to control what messaging users see at the campaign level since it is speaking to different users. And then you'll also be able to turn over new site link creatives depending on what's performing well and be able to pause the ones that aren't without that change applying to the entire account. So in this instance, I would probably call out that rather than having most site links at the account level, I would suggest switching to a campaign level strategy, having a certain set of site links that are designed for landlords, a certain set that are designed for tenants, and another set that's designed that could speak to both, that probably just talks about the business as a whole. That way you capture a bit of both audiences. We're gonna skip these next two. I'll come back to them in a minute. But since I talked about callouts, I wanna do the same thing here. This account only has callouts at the account level. And although we have all of the copy blurred out, apologize for that, this is one instance where we're really missing out on speaking directly to audiences. The first callout could basically be used for both audiences. The second, third, fourth, and fifth are designed mostly for tenants. The last one is as well, but the second to last one is designed mostly for landlords. So. These are speaking to different users across the board. They're all applying to all campaigns. And it might make things a little bit confusing if you're trying to find a place to rent and you're seeing messaging intended for the landlord as opposed to messaging intended for you. That said, they are using callouts, so that's good. No challenges there. I would just lay out a similar strategy that we just talked about for site links, having it applied to the campaign level and suggesting that they use that. And then structured snippet is the last one that is a non-negotiable for me. Here we have only one option. It's set at the account level. It speaks mostly to tenants. So there's really a missed opportunity at speaking to landlords. But again, having the campaign level messaging speak to each audience individually, and make sure that you're focusing on that. Now the two pieces that I missed in the middle, headline and description. This account is not using either of them, but these are a little bit different than the other ad assets. Rather than being additive to your ad creative in the search engine results page, headline and description assets will actually replace text in your responsive search ads and help you promote usually a short-term piece or try and test messaging in those different areas. I'm not gonna go too far into it on this video because we already have another one that talks about it. You can check that out at the top of the screen right now. But for now, nothing that I would call out here unless there's a very specific promotion or message that I would suggest testing. Maybe I would suggest using it here, but for the most part, these are gonna be fine the way they are. Call extensions are the next one. And this account can accept phone calls, but they don't want to advertise it because they already get enough phone calls and their call center is already usually pretty booked throughout the day. So in this instance, not having a call extension is the right call. But if we talked about strategy in an original kickoff call before this audit, and they said they wanted to generate more phone calls, I would definitely suggest that they use this. Lead form is gonna be pretty similar. They're not using it makes sense not to. They're capturing everything that they need to on the site. Location is another one that I would pay attention to. They have a business profile attached here and they have a location, but they don't want anybody going to this location. The automated location asset was off, I believe, of the automated extensions earlier, but just to make sure that nothing happens, I would tell them to remove this. 
You don't want anybody coming in here, changing things around and sending people to your physical office when that's not really what that's for. This is effectively a corporate headquarters for a virtual business that doesn't have brick and mortar for customers to visit. So it doesn't make sense to have this here. I'd suggest they take it out. We talked about before the app for this account. They do have an app, but again, they don't really wanna promote it. So they're not gonna have it in here. And then the last two, price and promotion. Both of these are assets that they are not currently using and they don't really make sense for this account type either. This is a landlord and tenant connection site. So it doesn't make sense for them to really have promotions or prices listed because it's all dependent on the location in the country, the city, what the different parameters are of the property, all that good stuff. So price and promotion doesn't make sense. It's fine for them to be in here just the way they are. And then we do usually come in and check the legacy ad extensions at the end. There's nothing in here in the all section and then dynamic image, nothing here as well. So none of that's really a problem. As we go through each of these different ad assets, we always look to see what the usage is, if there's any sort of strategy included, and then what the performance is for each of the different assets. So we talked about earlier in the site link section, we might look at performance, make suggestions based on what's going on there. But at the same time, we're also trying to understand the testing strategy. So if I hop back into the site link asset section, You'll see here that we have asset status is all but removed. If I just set it as all, now we can see that there are some site links that were added at the account level automatically created that have been removed, probably because they were automatically created and they were crap. But if we keep scrolling down, we'll see that there were some additional ones down here. Again, all automatically created that have been removed. Some have extended the text into the descriptions, some haven't. But effectively at this point, the thing that I'm noticing is that there's not much actual testing going on. We have a lot of different site links added at the account level, but nothing has really been paused despite there being a lot of performance metrics coming through these individual site links. Now that could be because they're not paying attention to it. They don't think it's worth the time. They're trying to focus on something else. Or it could be that because these are set up at the account level and not the campaign level, it's hard to decide what's performing best and what you should turn off because certain assets that are performing well for some campaigns are likely not performing well for others. So you don't wanna turn it off for the one it's performing poorly for because then you turn it off for the one it's performing well for because it's only at the account level. So depending on what we find in here for testing strategy, we will almost certainly call out that we need to have a regular review of ad assets pausing underperformers, creating new variants, launching new tests, all the same ABCs of testing within a paid search ad account. Overall, the asset audit section really just focuses on a few things. What assets are being used? Is there any sort of strategy? Are they missing any opportunities within the asset space? And do they have anything on that shouldn't be on, either because it's a mismatch to business goals or because it's performing poorly? Overall, I think this account is set up pretty well, covers the basis of the always in use, non-negotiable assets of site links, callouts, and structured snippets for me. But then additionally, they're also using images, business name, logo, and they're avoiding the asset types that would promote things that they don't want, like calls and location visits. For this account, my deliverable would really be focused on creating a campaign level asset strategy along with regular testing to make sure that they're speaking to the right audience, giving them the right messaging and seeing the best performance out of those campaigns that they can. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of insight into what we look at when we're auditing assets in an account. So if you have any questions about this portion of the audit or anything else in our audit process thus far, leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.